Hello, my name is Piotr. I'm a user interface designer at Pilot, and this talk is about Slack fatigue and how to avoid it. Slack is full of features and solves a real need for communication, so the companies adopted like crazy. The growth has been amazing, and some companies even brag how they shifted all their communication to Slack. It, might, it must work for them, right? But there is also this, articles with thousands of shares where some people proclaim that drinking from the Slack's fire hose is just too much. This has happened before. See, we already have a super, super popular method of team communication, which creates the same response uh, from people. It's obviously email, and people love to blame it for being distracted. In this case, we've had it for decades, and there are ways to deal with most of the issues. So first, you need to start with tools. You find better apps, you adjust preferences, you edit rules. You simply start receiving messages on your own terms. But there is also a decision to stop stressing about the contents of your inbox. This is less tangible, but it will be equally important. My solution in this talk will be a mix of tools, of changing useful settings, of tips and tricks, and things you might not know about Slack, but also a different way to think about notifications and messages in Slack. So let's dive in. I'll be focusing on a desktop app, uh, primarily because this is what I use daily, but web app and mobile apps have very similar layouts. This talk will translate there too. Let's imagine you're working on your daily stuff, you're editing a campaign, you're creating a design, you're editing code, making a spreadsheet, whatever and this pops in, and then another one, and five minutes later, yet another one. And you keep trying to go back to work, but it's just endless pinging. What I need you to understand is that is isn't people. It's, it's not that it's people's fault. The need to communicate is the backbone of any organization. This is about Slack and how to properly set it up so there is a balance between productivity and staying in the loop. I'm going to try to help you um, but first, we need to learn how to how notifications work in Slack. For this purpose, I identified four sources of those interruptions. First, vanilla mentions, just someone writing your username or pinging the team that you're in. This can be mostly useful when set properly. Then there are channel-wide notifications. Uh, add channel will uh, send a notification to everyone, doesn't matter if they're online or not and add here will work only for those who are online. I think that they're really useful and I will be talking about them later. Unread messages aren't really notifications, but they can still interrupt you by creating a need to know what's new. I think they're mostly useless. And then there are direct messages. They are most attention grabbing and their usefulness is a coin flip. I'll talk about DMs later. Again, I'll be showing what worked for me. You're welcome to experiment with those settings and try to build your own workflow in Slack. To begin, let's open global notification settings. This is how you get to them. Click the bell icon, click this. Here they are, let's zoom in. This is pretty self-explanatory. You obviously don't want to uh, receive notifications for everything, so don't, don't check all the activity. But also, don't check nothing. Um, don't disable all notifications. They can be useful. I think it's better to rule them than to completely kill them. Next, uh, sounds. If you have a big screen, maybe you would like to leave them on if you, don't, if you cannot easily see the notification, useful notification in the top right corner. But I just personally think they are distracting. I dis disable them. Now, for the Mac users, please disable the badge from the dock icon. It's not healthy to know that there is something that you haven't yet opened. Just disable this. Now, moving on to per channel settings. This is how you get to them. Yeah. Let's zoom in. And right off the bat, you will notice a copy of global settings that we set just now, but this time, you can change them per channel. You can use this to disable notifications for the worst channels and leave them for the channels that you are truly interested in and you would like to receive notifications on your screen. Now, don't worry about missing mentions. They will wait for you in the sidebar. 
Next, we have channel identifications. Like I said, uh, they are really useful. They make sense for, let's say, an office channel where you would like to coordinate going out for lunch, where you would like to grab everyone's attention, but for most channels, just disable them. And finally, there is this master switch. You can mute a channel. Um, if you're like me, you might want to check other teams and their projects, but it doesn't mean that you want to know all their internal stuff all the time. If they are pinging their channel, if they're pinging their team, there is really no need for you to be notified about it in real time. So when you mute the channel, you can go from this, this, you will immediately see that all the bold white channels with unread activity became gray and muted. Uh, and again, mentions will display just fine in the sidebar, so you can catch them during the review later. Now, last but not least, if you click the account preferences link at the bottom of this window, you will get this uh, table view in a separate web page where you can set all the uh, settings at once, it's less clicking. Yeah, so we've dealt with mentions and we clean up the sidebar. There's just only one thing left. Um, direct messages are tricky. Currently, there is no way to disable direct message notifications without turning them all off, all notifications. I don't think this is bad, and here's what I will suggest. If you're talking more than five, 10 minutes with anyone, just call them. It will be, whatever you're doing will be done faster. And if you find yourself chatting with someone for the whole day, in and out, about some deep subject, just move this to a channel. Create a new one if there is no channel available or just try to pick existing one. Um, if you just like to talk with someone because they're good friends, make a private channel. Just when creating a channel, check this and now everything will be secret and you will still have an option to uh, change notification preferences in, for that channel alone when you want to focus. Right, so I hope by now you get um, how to customize your workflow. Uh, just choose channels more important to you and clean up the rest. Now about you, the user. There's virtually nothing in Slack channels which requires your immediate attention. If there is a real emergency, someone will call you, so don't worry about that. So set a healthy schedule where you want to check what's going on in Slack. Don't do this. You know, don't just click on every channel wondering if there is a new message waiting for you. And you can train yourself to do a review every few hours by using the snooze option. It's again under the bell icon. So you, if you enable it for two hours, um, all notifications will stop appearing on your screen and after the time passes, everything will be brought to your attention. Another thing to learn is message management. Um, I think nobody likes half-asking things, whether it's the work that you're trying to do right now or the answer that someone is waiting for. Just do it right. So if you're interrupted by a message or a mention, um, don't immediately reply. Remind yourself to do it later. You can do it by clicking the button here. And let's just say setting tomorrow. Now Slackbot will message you tomorrow at 9 a.m. with the link to this message so you can check it out. Similarly, don't succumb to fear of missing out. All mentions are stored in the right pane under this icon in the top. For older messages, you can search. This is how you search for mentions uh, to you from a particular person, and this is how you do it in a channel. You can also start messages for later they will just appear in the sidebar here, so nothing is lost. So hopefully now you're armed with the knowledge that how to fine tune Slack, how to change useful settings, how to mute channels that don't interest you. But please also try to get this healthier attitude towards the Slack, modern inbox of our times. And I think this is important because if you don't do it, uh, you might end up burnt out or just less productive for both. Thank you.